Hey guys and gals, got another one for you today. <clears throat> today I'm in my Rampanzer, tier 10 scout, German. And we are on Fisherman's Bay, standard battle. And this by no means is going to be an ace tanker. Um, just kind of having fun in my scout tank. Flying solo. Fisherman's Bay, usually the scouts will control the middle and the one line. Normally you don't go to the city, but we let the heavies, tank destroyers, take care of that. I'm going to make like an aggressive line, but these buildings give you cover, so if you get shot, it's pretty rare. If you do, it's like a little bit of damage. I'm going to get unspotted, and now I'm going to get set up to make another run here. And my scout tank over here already put down some vision, so rather than putting vision down, making an aggressive scout run, I'm gonna try to get a shot into these guys. And before I shoot, I get spotted. So I pull out of that location. Really don't wanna be in the middle if you're lit up. There's a lot of places to hide on the map. Like H2 can shoot to the middle. Anywhere like K7 to H8 can shoot up to the middle. They usually have guys in the middle, and then there's also like J2 on the back sniper ridge also can shoot the middle. So if you're lit up and you're hanging around in the middle, you're gonna expose yourself to a lot of gun angles. As I come over here, I'm lit. Um, but I have the hill in between us. And they're not looking at me, they're looking at my sniper hill, so I'm gonna get three shots into them. Also, try not to isolate yourself, because this is a small enough map, map where say if red team's wolf pack and their scouts, you get caught out, they can pretty much dispatch you uh, pretty quickly and get back into cover. There's a lot of hills and areas to hide. Now they might trade a scout for you if they're wolf packing, um, just if your snipers are focus firing. The chances are you're gonna die and not be able to make an impact, so just keep that in mind. Our scouts were all together, now we've kind of separated along the middle here, which is totally fine. You have to be attentive to the map, because at any time, um, they can just rush over the middle. I've posted other videos where um, it's like mid-game or end-game, and people just get sick and tired of you putting out good vision, so they'll start to rush you. And all you gotta do is track them. You track them up on the hill in the center, they get destroyed pretty quickly. They found us. So I don't feel like our team's really making any progress on either side. It's really like a camp off. And this 140 starts to make a play into the middle of the map. So I come to help. As I'm coming over to help, he's backing up. Now this tank does not do well backing up, so I don't want to back up. The Ram Panzer tries to cut me off, and I get a shot into him. Conquer tries to ram me. You know, at this point, I'm just auto locked. No. Okay, so I shoot the Pershing. And now I turn around, and now I'm just driving away. I'm trying to dodge their shells. And I'm not even looking to see what I'm aiming at or what I'm shooting at. This Rampanzer just can't stand the fact that I'm going to get away. Um, so he's chasing me down. <laughs> and then my team wrecks him. So I make just a horrendous play there to try to support my 140 that I thought was going to um, make a play over the middle and didn't. Um, and at that point I was just like, you know what, I'm committed. If I stop here, I'm probably going to get tracked or essentially shot at by a bunch of tanks. So um, one of the best defense for a scout is their mobility. So I use that to my advantage. 
and dodge some shells. Now, it kind of looked like I went AFK for a second there, and that's because I was messaging that Rampanzer. Just laughy faces. I'm an over-aggressive competitor, and when people misplay to try to kill me, I like to rub it in their face, and hopefully they learn from it. I mean, I definitely learned a lot about this game from people doing that. Is it the right thing to do? Probably not. It's poor sportsmanship, but... I mean, he made that play to try to kill me, and he ended up getting killed, so it was kind of hilarious. So as I make my way over here, I'm sitting on 139 hit points. Um, to me, if I can help my team get rid of a Death Star, then I'm going to do that. So I have 139 hit points. If this guy chooses to shoot me, and he's going to be absolutely wrecked by my other scout tank that came with me. However, he's not even really set up to do anything. So between me and my other scout, we're going to be able to trash this guy. He definitely could have aimed his gun over towards me, but he chose not to there, and I think it's just because he didn't want to do 140 damage. So I shot him down, this 140 tries to ram me, and then he finally gets his shot in and kills me. And I'm like, what? Why didn't this guy do this when we first got over here? If he came over here and killed me right away, his Death Star would be dead. Probably me and the RU-251 would be dead, and this game would be totally different now. Um, but instead, he chooses to wait until his Death Star is dead before he comes over and makes the play. I don't know if he thought maybe the Death Star was going to be able to defend himself, but if he was watching, he would have known that his Death Star was getting his butt kicked. Not to mention it's cool on the replay that you can see their comms, and the Death Star asks for help. Um, and never receives it until it's way too late. So then I messaged the 140 and I'm like, don't you think that was a little late, buddy? And he's like, no, I killed you. And I guess, yeah, maybe he thought it was game over already, so um, just getting one more kill before end game is worth it to him. So that was his mindset in the whole scenario. But then I let him know that had he done that sooner, he would have um, he would have saved his Death Star. So the T-Light goes into the city, makes some aggressive plays, really just chasing Artie and sorry you 251 was going to and they both end up dying. Really what our team should have done was just enclose around the city here. Their E-75 shuts down the IS-3, our meal shuts down the Conqueror, and then there is just one left, so... The heavies did kind of work their way into the city, they were just more tactical about it than they probably should have been. Maybe they were just driving the whole time, not giving them enough credit, but. So he misses the side of this purging, tracks him. This turbo rams him. See, that's probably a good idea to ram something in this turbo. But he gets the shot in, shuts him down. That's game over. So why did I want to feature this? A, because making a play, um, I don't know, if you're a medium tank and you're gonna go make a move and you got a scout that's gonna support you, then you should make your move fully. Like, did I want him to drive out into that field? No, I wanted him to sit by that house and get shots into their side while I drove behind them to get their turrets turned. Um, but he backed up as soon as I was pretty much all in committed. Um, so I had to make that play without him, and I should have died there, absolutely. I'm not going to say that my skill got me through that situation. They definitely just missed their shots. Um, 
And then also, if you are on low health, that definitely doesn't mean that you're relegated to a sniping position. Now, it really depends on your tank. Like, if you're in a heavy tank, driving, making the play that I did is probably not that great because if you get spotted by the 140, you're going to die. He's going to kill you. But since I'm a mobile tank, I'm a scout, I got good vision, I don't really need hit points as long as I'm using the terrain to my advantage um, and still getting intel out for the team. And then if you catch someone out, that 183 Death Star is a really strong tank, except if it's by itself, which we just showed that. So I did take third on the team, 3,400 damage. <clears throat> T Light took first with 4,200 assisted, almost 2K damage, two kills. Conqueror did work in the city, excuse me, 3,700 and then 1,800 assisted with one kill. And. Our Stervo and our E75 did some good work too. So, a lot of tanks over 2k damage, a couple of us over 3k, and the Ram Panzer did 1600 damage, and their 140 is down here with a thousand damage, which I have no idea what he was doing. It felt like he was trying to do the sniping roll and maybe RNG. Um, just let him down since the 140 isn't the most accurate at range, but I think that he probably just hid too much, to be honest. <laughs> He's one of the people that with their sixth sense goes off and then they can't participate. They have to wait until they're unspotted before they actually do something. Which I don't know anything about because I never had sixth sense when I started this game. Um, not till recently did I put six cents on my scouts and I've decided like my thought process is just like how I survived playing this game without six cents on my scout tanks. Some medium tanks I think is important too, but definitely like heavies, there's so much better skills that you can have than six cents. Um, it gives you a lot of information, but especially when you're a new player, it's detrimental to you being able to make plays that not really I guess it depends on who it is but what I'm trying to say is there's definitely people in the game that when their sixth sense goes off they hide behind the rock rather than progressing forward and really all it is is there's a scout in a bush spotting them and he has nobody helping him he just wants to put vision down for his team um, so they know what's happening on the map so rather than going to push that scout out of the location, they'll just sit behind the rock and poke out and continue to do that as long as their sixth sense continues to go off. So you can argue that, but I'll argue it back to the moon. I know that stuff happens. I watch it happen all the time. <clears throat> all right, that's all I got for you guys. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and follow, and I will catch you in the next video.